Okay, today we're going to look at the musculoskeletal blueprint of the pants and pan re review for, um, from the MCCPA blueprint. Um, out of all the sections, this is probably the longest section, so bear with me. Uh, the first thing we're going to talk about is disorders of the shoulder. Uh, when um, with the history and physical exam of, uh, of the shoulder, uh, there's several tests that we put people through, and they assess various things. Uh, the near test forcibly entraps the humerus against the uh, uh, cromio um, arc. Um, it's a test for impingement. It has uh, it has is having the patient flex their arm over their head, bringing the the arm near the patient's head. Internal ro internal shoulder rotation is tested by having the patient reach their thumb as far behind their head uh, while sit seated. Mm -hmm. The empty can test uh, or supraspinous test uh, is when the patient places both arms in, in a position of abduction in 30 degrees forward uh, flexion with th the thumbs down. The examiner pushes both arms down and, and uh, as the patient resists, uh, weakness is consistent with the rotator cuff tear. Inferior instability is tested by ha having the patient abduct the arm to 90 degrees and the examiner pushes directly downward to the mid humerus. And this can indicate inferior subluxation of the glenohumerular joint. Posterior instability is assessed by having the patient flex the shoulder to 90 degrees and have the examiner push posteriorly. Hawkins is another impingement test, uh, and this is tested by having the patient put arm uh, in a throwing uh, position and flex about 30 degrees. The examiner then forcibly internally rotates the humerus. A positive test indicates impingement syndrome. Apprehension sign <clears throat> is assessed by having the patient uh, place the arm in a throwing position and having the patient pull backward, uh, pull hand backward in a more external rotation uh, and extension. Uh, it, is, it is also an assessment for an unstable shoulder. Sulcus sign is having the patient dangle arm to the side uh, inferiorly and watched for deepening of the uh, acromial humeral sulcus. This is, uh, test is consistent with glenohumeral instability. Plain radiographs of the shoulder are used to assess uh, the integrity of the joint, fractures, effusions, and arthritis. Uh, ligaments, tendons, and rotator cuff injuries are best imaged by MRI. Uh, diagnosis is made by uh, history and physical exam and confirmed by radiographic studies. Uh, the glenohumeral joints consist of the glenohumeral he head setting in the glenoid fossa of the scapula, the acromial. A clavicular joint consists of the acromion uh, uh, of the scapula and the lateral aspect of the clavicle. Uh, the rotator cuff consists of four muscles, uh, supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor, and subscapularis. I want to move on now and talk about fractures and dislocations of the shoulder. Um, the first one I want to talk about is acromial clavicular injuries. Um, <coughs> a typical mechanism for this type of injury is the tip of the shoulder um, is is fallen onto and the patient's arm is tucked to the side. Uh, we use the term AC separation, but it's actually AC subluxation. When patients with the AC separation present with pain at the AC joint and, and lifting their arm is difficult. Diagnosis is made by plain radiographs of the AC joint and can be done with or without weights to exaggerate the injury. There, there are several grades of uh, AC separation, and type 1 is when the, uh, the, when the joint capsule is uh, partially disrupted. Type 2 is when the, uh, the CC ligaments are partially disrupted. Uh, uh, joint Type 3 is when the joint capsule and CC ligaments are completely disrupted. And type 4 is a avulsion of the CC ligament and clavicle. And number 5, uh, or type 5, is posterior uh, dislocation in the clavicle behind the acromion. And uh, type 6 is um, inferior uh, uh, dislocation of the lateral of the lateral end of the clavicle. If, if injury is not treated appropriately, it can cause patient chronic shoulder pain, cause chronic deformity, and decreased range of motion in paresthesias. Uh, type 1 through 3 separation can usually be treated conservatively with NSAIDs and a sling. Uh, type uh, 4 through 5 uh, requires uh, surgical repair usually. Ice to area acutely helps reduce pain. NSAIDs and analgesics should be given to manage patient's symptoms.
I want to move on now and talk about clavicle fractures. Uh, clavicle fracture, the mechanism of injury usually involves the patient falling under the shoulder or being hit in the shoulder with, a, with an object. On physical exam, patients have difficulty raising their arm. Uh, diagnosis is confirmed by plain x-rays. Other differentials uh, include AC separation and dislocation or separation of the sternoclavicular joint. Health maintenance would, provide, uh, would focus on fall prevention uh, for elderly and young children. Most clavicle fractures can be immobilized with a sling. Children usually heal within three to four weeks, uh, where adults may take four to six weeks. Usually after three weeks, uh, um, you can start uh, exercising the shoulder and strengthening the shoulder and ice the sore areas to, acutely to help with the swelling and pain. Patients should be treated with um, NSAIDs and analgesics as needed. Um, children will heal faster because of the ossification centers of, of the clavicle. The next thing I want to talk about is proximal humus fractures. Uh, the typical mechanism is uh, falling directly under the shoulder or struck in the shoulder with a blunt force. Um, on exam, the patients have pain and swelling uh, in the proximal humerus. Uh, patients will typically have exquisite pain on any movement of the shoulder. Patients can uh, can rarely get a loss of feeling in the arm, which should, um, which should raise suspicion for um, a possible brachial plexus injury. Patients with mid-shaft humerus fractures can be associated with the radial nerve injury, so it's important uh, to assess for a wrist drop. Um, patients uh, rarely can injure the uh, axillary artery. It can lead to vascular compromise in the upper extremity and, and the radial ulnar pulses must be assessed. Plain films of the shoulder and the humerus uh, are the imaging study of choice for diagnosis of shoulder fractures. Patients with suspected brachial plexus uh, injury need an EMG of a, and an MRI of that shoulder. Patients with vascular compromise either need arterial dopplers, a CT of the extremity, or an angiogram of the site. Differential diagnosis includes rotator cuff tear, shoulder dislocation, AC separation, or biceps tendon tear. Health maintenance fall, focus on, on fall prevention and screening uh, for osteoporosis in uh, the target populations. Minimally displaced fractures uh, uh, are considered those uh, less than one centimeter can be treated with a sling. Usually after the first week, the patient will begin exercises uh, as pain permits. After three weeks, the patient can go uh, to where the sling is needed. Proximate humerus fractures are larger than one centimeter. It will likely require surgical repair. I, I used to uh, fracture site can uh, help pain and swelling in the acute phase. Patients should be managed with opiate analgesic as needed for pain. Early treatment for osteoporosis uh, can reduce fracture uh, risk in elderly patients. Now I want to move on and talk about fractures of the scapula. Fractures of the scapula uh, usually come from a result of a high energy trauma. It's a difficult bone to break. Um, it usually, it, it is unusual to have an isolated scapular fracture, most associated with other fractures. Again, it just has to go into the high high energy it needs to uh, is needed to break the scapula. Pain in the posterior shoulder is the most common uh, complaint, w along with pain with movement. A scapular diagnosis can uh, be confirmed uh, w with plain films of the shoulder or on a chest x-ray. CT scan should be performed if the fracture of the scapula involved if the fracture of the scapula involves the glenoid. Diagnosis can, can be confirmed by physical examination uh, and by plain films of the scapular x-ray on chest x-ray. Um, patients can have a loss of range of motion or, or chronic pain if not treated appropriately. Mobilization for one to two weeks with a sling is, uh, as initial treatment and the range of motion exercises uh, and physical therapy can be initiated. Patients need to be managed with uh, opioid analgesics and can, there can be uh, suprascapular nerve impingement with these injuries, so uh, a, a good nerve vascular exam is needed. The next thing I want to talk about is shoulder dislocations. Uh, shoulder dislocations, the injury mechanism usually involves patient falling under the shoulder. The most common uh, dislocation of the shoulder is anterior dislocation. Uh, patients usually present with uh, arm held straight down and have marked and decreased range of motion. There may, a gap be, there may be a gap noted near the shoulder uh, uh, on physical examination. You can't assess by, uh, can't assess um, axillary nerve um, injury by assessing uh, sensation over the deltoid. Diagnosis is made by plain films and physical examination.
subsequent dislocations of the shoulder can happen because uh, of injury and, um, and loosening of the ligaments. The patients must have their shoulder reduced. This requires a consultation to manage usually. Reduction can be accomplished with multiple techniques. The most common technique is the traction counter traction uh, technique and a Stinson te technique. Traction and counter traction involves pulling the affected shoulder uh, uh, with the elbow bed at 90 degrees and have the other system hold traction of the bed sheet. The Stinson technique involves having the patient lay prone with her shoulder over the table holding a weight. After reduction, you need to get post-reduction radiographs and, and it's successful. And patients should be um, placed in a sling and swath after reduction and uh, need to assess neurovascular status after reduction. Patients need, need constipation and can successfully reduce uh, the shoulder in most instances. Pain can be managed with NSAIDs and or opiate analgesics. Actually, nerve uh, is a possible uh, um, with shoulder dislocations. The next thing I want to talk about is soft tissue injuries of the shoulder. Interlateral shoulder pain is aggravated uh, by overhead reaching, is often associated with the Pinsman syndrome and or rotator cuff tendonitis. Adhesive uh, capsulitis or frozen shoulder is anterior lateral pain that is accompanied with stiffness, decreased exter external or uh, abduction. Labral tears do not present with anterior shoulder pain, um, but is associated with instability uh, or catching sensation. Rotator cuff pain uh, um, involving the external rotators, such as teres uh, minor and inference spinatus, can be localized uh, or, or can cause localized posterior shoulder pain. Pain with the posterior shoulder commonly comes from the superior trapezius or uh, cervical nerve radiculopathy. Poorly localized um, shoulder pain is uh, usually extrinsic uh, from the external radiculopathy or even elbow pathology. Biceps tendonitis <clears throat> slash rupture uh, biceps tendonitis comes from infl inflammation along the head of the biceps tendon as it passes along the uh, anterior bicipital group of the anterior humerus. Lifting or usual activity it can cause chronically inflamed tendon to spontaneously rupture. Multi-direction instability of the shoulder is consistent with subluxation, partial dislocation, or uh, loose shoulder. Typically comes from excessive range of motion with internal and external rotation. Plain films can be obtained but are often little value in patients with shoulder or with soft tissue injuries of the shoulder. MRI of the shoulder is the most useful test in, uh, for definitive diagnosis. History and physical exam coupled with definitive diagnosis or no, sorry, diagnosis and studies support the, the, the definitive diagnosis of soft tissue shoulder pathology. Physical therapy and strengthening exercises can be useful in treating uh, and preventing soft tissue uh, shoulder injuries. Lidocaine injection uh, tests help confirm the, the diagnosis of a specific shoulder or a specific disorder if the patient's pain and symptoms improve after injection. Some shoulder injuries, such as the rotator cuff tears and labral tears, need to be correctly surgically. Uh, other injuries can be treated medically with physical therapy, uh, NSAIDs, or immobilization. NSAIDs and opiate analgesics can, can be helpful to control patients' symptoms.